Hello everyone. In this video tutorial, I will discuss how to use Super Pro Designer and Schedule Pro to size purified water systems. If this topic interests you and you would like to apply it to your own process, but you don't have Super Pro Designer or Schedule Pro, you can always download the evaluation versions of both tools by visiting our website www.intelligent.com, as you can see on my screen, to try it out on your own. This video tutorial has been divided into two parts. This is part one. To begin this topic, I will first provide some information on WFI systems. For that, I'm going to bring up some PowerPoint slides. In general, purified water, or WFI, is a resource that can be used at different stages of your process. Examples of its use include buffer preparation, cleaning, and direct use in the process. In addition, purified water may serve multiple processes and production suites. It is therefore important that when designing a new facility that the various components of the WFI system are sized in such a way that the demands of the facility are met. A WFI system includes three elements. The first one is a still that vaporizes the water. The second one is a surge tank to hold that WFI. And the third is a circulation loop which delivers your WFI to your process. All three components, the still, the surge tank, and the circulation system, need to be designed to be able to meet the capacity of a facility. Let's have a look at this in more detail. This slide shows a WFI tank with two loops. From an equipment design point of view, we need to size the still that generates the WFI, the distribution tank, and the loops. In terms of the loops, we need to design the pumps and the pipes. Super Pro Designer and Schedule Pro facilitate the design of WFI systems by providing WFI demand information in the form of a chart, as you see in this slide. This chart corresponds to a typical demand of a biopharmaceutical facility and it corresponds to the instantaneous demand of WFI. As you can see, the demand varies with time and there are certain peaks where a large demand of WFI is needed in the process. So since the demand of WFI varies greatly with time, now the question is what value or values should we then use to size the WFI system? Before we answer that question, let's have a look at two other types of demand that help us size the different components of the WFI system. In this chart, we see the cumulative and the average demand for a certain time interval for WFI. More specifically, the green line represents the cumulative demand, which corresponds to the right-hand side of the axis, so the units here are in kilograms, and the blue line, which is this one here, represents the average demand. A time interval of 12 hours was chosen for both of these demands. As I mentioned before, the red line, which is this one here, represents the instantaneous demand. This chart that you see on my screen includes enough information for sizing all three elements of a WFI system. More specifically, the tallest green peak, which would be this one, provides useful information for sizing the storage tank. In this case, it would be around 150,000 kilograms. The blue line for the same time interval, this one here, provides useful information for sizing the still. This rate would be around 13,000 kilograms per hour. It is now important to mention that if we reduce the averaging interval, the tank size will go down and the still rate will increase. In other words, there is a trade-off between tank size and still rate. We'll see this in greater detail a little later. Finally, the tallest red peak provides useful information for sizing the circulation loop. The pumps and the pipe diameter of the loop must be able to accommodate the highest instantaneous demand. As you can imagine, there is not only one solution for the sizing of the tank and the still, as they are dependent on the time interval that is chosen, which is the trade-off I mentioned a few moments ago. Let's have a look at this graphically in order to understand it a bit better. This slide displays the trade-off between tank size and still capacity. The point where the two lines cross correspond to the base case that we have chosen here. The blue line represents the tank size and corresponds to the y-axis on the left-hand side 
and the magenta line represents the steal rate that corresponds to the y-axis on the right-hand side. As we reduce the averaging interval, the tank size goes down and the steal rate goes up. This is equivalent to having smaller surge capacity, which in return requires larger steal capacity. On the other hand, if we increase the averaging interval, we also increase our tank size, but we reduce our steal rate. It is therefore important to mention that the solution you choose should be feasible in terms of equipment capacity and space available in your facility. Furthermore, if you select a particular solution for your tank size and steal rate, Super Pro Designer and Schedule Pro allows you to generate a chart to track the inventory of WFI, as you can see in this slide. The green line represents WFI inventory, and the blue line represents the WFI production profile. Let's now switch to Super Pro Designer so that I can show you how to access this chart and work with this feature through the tool itself. This model represents the production and purification of an enzyme and consists of a fermentation and purification section. Within this process, WFI is used at various stages for different purposes. It is used for buffer and media preparations, cleaning purposes, and directly in the process. For example, WFI is used in the first unit procedure for the preparation of media that will be used to grow the cells in the fermentation procedure. With this said, it is important to recognize that WFI consumption needs to be added to your process adequately in the steps that utilize the resource so that the consumption charts accurately approximate the real consumption. To generate WFI consumption charts, you can select the charts option in the menu, then select materials, entering materials, and then select the option multiple batches. In the dialog that pops up, you need to select your resource of interest. Notice that you can generate charts for all of the different materials that you use in your process. In this case, we need to select WFI, and then we click OK in order to generate the chart. As you can see in the chart, the instantaneous demand is the only demand that is displayed initially in the chart. In order to display the cumulative and average demand, we first need to specify a time interval for this chart. To do that, we can right-click an empty area and then select the option Edit Style from the Context menu. Through this dialog that pops up, we have the options to show the time average rate, that would be our average demand, and also show our consumption amount. By selecting those two options, I'm now asking the program to also display this information. Notice as well that we need to specify our time interval for both the time average rate demand and the consumption amount. In this case, we'll choose a time interval of six hours. If we now press OK, our new two plots will be displayed in the chart. As you can see, the chart now includes the cumulative demand, which corresponds to the green line, and also the average rate demand, which corresponds to the blue line. Now, as I mentioned in the PowerPoint presentation, this chart gives us enough information to size a WFI system. The highest instantaneous demand peak gives us the maximum rate that our delivery system needs to be able to handle. Also, notice that if I put my cursor on top of the peak, the different operations that create that high demand are displayed. Furthermore, the highest cumulative demand peak provides enough information for sizing the storage tank. That would be this peak right here. Finally, the tallest average demand peak provides information to design the still. Using the information provided through this chart, we can also generate an inventory chart for the WFI. To do that, we first need to select an adequate tank size and still rate from this chart. In this case, we use the highest or the tallest cumulative peak, that would be something around 55,000 kilograms, and we also use the tallest peak for the steel rate, which would be this one, and that would be something around 10,000 kilograms per hour. Let's remember this information as we'll use it for the inventory chart. 
To generate a material inventory chart, we need to go to the main menu and select Charts, select Materials again, and in this case select Entering Inventory and also Multiple Batches. In this dialog that pops up, we need to select our Material of Interest, our WFI in this case, and then we need to provide the Supply Information, which we can do by clicking on the Supply Information button. In the Capacity, we need to specify our tank size that we selected, and through the supply rate, we need to specify our supply rate or our steel rate that we selected as well from the chart. Notice that the numbers I selected are already specified because I specified them before I started this demonstration. Furthermore, we also need to specify the initial contents of our inventory tank in this area. In this case, it would be 20,000 kilograms to start our inventory. And we also need to specify the on and off trigger percentages for the production of our WFI. In this case, I'm specifying that I will begin to produce WFI once my tank level drops below 35% and I will stop when my tank is full. We can now click OK to generate the chart. Notice that in this chart there are two lines. The brown line corresponds to the inventory profile while our light blue line corresponds to the production profile. Looking at our production profile, we see that we start producing WFI at the beginning and then once the tank is full, it stops producing WFI and then it starts again once the level drops below the 35% limit. Moreover, it is possible to change the number of batches used to generate this inventory chart or the demand chart. We can do that again by right-clicking on an empty area of the chart, selecting the option Set Number of Batches, and then specifying the number of batches that we like. Let's specify 15 batches, press OK, and you see that the chart is automatically updated to account for the new number of batches. This concludes part one of this video tutorial. Please make sure to watch part two where I'll discuss how to use Schedule Pro for sizing of purified water systems. Thank you very much for your attention.